Howdy, welcome back. Let's pull some more data uh, that's not just the Australian Delta outbreak data. So to get started, let's look at our world in data. So if we go to this website, here's the home page. This is a really great website for all sorts of data. Um, of course, they're doing their fair share to track the COVID data. So they have this banner at the top, updated daily. So, oh, this is talking just about vaccinations right now. Uh, so we can see, for example, share of people vaccinated. Uh, pro tip, when you're looking at this website, you think, well, how can I get everyone together? You need to look for the country called World. Okay, W in the list. Um, fully vaccinated, apparently 30% worldwide are fully vaccinated. That's pretty crazy that 30% of the world are in one single category. Um, pretty much there's only been you know, uh, a little bit less than a year of vaccinations ongoing. Anyways, data I want to look at today is going to involve deaths. So you can't really argue with death data, although uh, in statistically you can have a look and say uh, a lot of things about uh, particularly older folks that die while they have COVID, you know, did the COVID get them or uh, was it an underlying condition? You might hear this a lot, underlying conditions. Uh, anyways, we, so we have data here of, uh, uh, of deaths. So what does it say? New confirmed deaths per million people. Uh, and we have a, a rolling seven day average. Uh, and so here we have over a year and we can see the various waves um, and, and just some sample data. Now there's a huge spike here and this is in the United Kingdom. Okay, so let's grab UK data. I'm gonna deselect these ones. So just looking at the UK to where we are now. Uh, so it was much worse earlier this year, even though now a lot more people have COVID uh, because Delta is much more contagious, um, but deaths are way down. And of course that is helped by the vaccination process and uh, you know things like lockdowns and things like people just generally being wary of uh, other people that are symptomatic and things like that. So what I wanna to try to capture and model is gonna be this spike here in January uh, down to uh, this flat region here um, just a couple months ago in June. So I wanna actually get the numbers. I'm not going to sit here and copy out all the numbers. So I'm just gonna click download and I want a CSV so that I can open it using Excel. So that's gonna open straight into Excel. It may take a little while. I think the file is like 18 megabytes in size. So it's a pretty, pretty big Excel file. Uh, if I just look at here, we have 115,000 rows. So a very big Excel file indeed. Um, Okay, so what am I looking for? I'm looking for the UK, so location. This is where I want. I don't want Afghanistan. So I'm gonna put on a filter and I'm going to clear everything. And I'm gonna search for just United Kingdom. Okay, and Across the top here are all of my data columns. So total cases, new cases, total deaths, new deaths, new deaths smooth. So let's look at the website, go back to the chart. Uh, so this was daily new confirmed deaths. So that's what I'm after here. So not total deaths, but I want new deaths. And I also might want new deaths smooth. And I wanna go from about the peak which was January 24th. So I want this column. And then I'm looking for January 24th. Okay, so this still didn't make sense to me because I was looking at this peak of 1800. 
and trying to match it to the graph. So here's the graph with the peak, but the peak here is just over 18. Uh, and the difference that I missed the first time around was in the fine print here. Well, it's not so fine, it's right in the title. It says deaths per million people. Okay, so that's being uh, normalized so that you can compare it with smaller countries. So we'll continue without worrying too much about that. But if I go back to the Excel sheet and I look at my headers and I scroll over, I'm going to the right. I have total cases per million now and I have new deaths per million. Uh, and so this is the average over seven days that should total around 18. Seven, let's have a look here. And if we look at the average, it says 17.92 going back in time for seven days. So that's the column that the graph is referring to on this was right on the front page of the Our World in Data site. January 20th, so let's start here. So I want this row and I want it all the way forward to let's pick a date. Uh, let's pick May 20th so we have a nice easy, even number. So that's to here. Okay, so that's the data that I'm after. So let's select the data. And you can hold control and do a second selection. Okay, and we're going to, right on top of all of this, we're going to go insert and there's my line chart. I'll make it bigger. Okay, so this is uh, new deaths in the UK and starting in January this year where they had a real big spike. And so here's what it looks like. So we can do the same sort of analysis. So I can right click and I can say add trend line. And we'll do exponential. And we'll look on the chart and it's one of these that is almost zero. Always interesting to see what Excel comes up with here. So let's click on the X axis and we'll go to the series options and turn it into text. And that looks a bit better. Let's see if I can move this up. So the equation updated, that looks better. Uh, and it looks like a pretty good match. So the dashed modeled line looks to go through a lot of the data. Now there's these crazy big spikes here. Um, and the reason is just in the way that the deaths are reported. So if I go back, I'll just move the chart over. So if I go back to the beginning of the series, So we can see here a large number of deaths, 1,300, and then 600, and then 500, and then a large number, and then 500, and then 400. And these numbers are going to be about seven days apart, okay? And that is just because of the seven-day weekday cycle. So usually on the weekends, the reporting is a little bit slack. Uh, you know, people still like to uh, go hang out with their dog, and so, People aren't always sending in the data on the weekends. And then at the beginning of the week, you're going to see a spike when everything gets collated together. So that's pretty common as long as we get all the numbers eventually. Um, and so that's why we have this uh, whipsaw back and forth action. And we have it uh, in the lower numbers as well. It's just not as apparent. So one thing we could do um, to avoid this is go back to the top of our data series. So let's go back 
to the column headings and we pick new deaths. And there's this column here, new deaths smooth. And if I go back to our world in data, it says a rolling seven day average. So what they're gonna do is they're going to take the past seven days and just average those so that these spikes, right? Seven day average because of this weekend behavior in the seven day week um, and average those out so that you don't see these peaks on a Monday and a Tuesday and these spikes on a Saturday, uh, these low numbers on a Saturday and a Sunday. So let's do the smooth, it's just one column over and see if that looks any better. Okay, so the smooth column is J. So how can I fix this? What I can do is double click on my chart. I can say select data and instead of I, I'm gonna change the data to J. So I is my column. Pop in J, pop in J. And now the solid blue line, okay, is as promised a lot more smooth. All right, so that's the smoothed out data. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily match with my model anymore. And if you think about the rolling average, I started with the peak here, January 20th, but the rolling average takes um, the six prior days before that, which weren't as high and averages them out. So instead of a peak, okay, and then a decline, we have this nice rounded top. Uh, so maybe that's what you want, or maybe you prefer it um, the other way. Um, and a lot of this comes down to uh, data visualization and uh, the data science in terms of how you want to present the data. Uh, in order to get across the point that you have in mind. Okay, now my equation also updated. Um, and this one, it doesn't f look like it, f it fits as many. So one thing I could do is I could maybe start, instead of this flat area, I could maybe start here. Um, what is this now, February 1st? So maybe I wanna start February 1st, which is, so January 20th is 587. February 1st is 599. So I can change my data series. I wonder if I can do it like this. Start February 1st there. Oh no. And then resize this one as well. So my chart updated automatically, so that was nice. And we can see here a lot better fit. So the dashed line follows much more closely in terms of this equation, much more closely the data. Let's do a quick plot. So 1147E. Okay, zoom out. Okay, so here is where we are. Where did we start? We started around 1200. So let's get my y axis going. Let's see, looks fine. So somewhere in here we should have the intercept. There it is, 1147.9. And then one thing we could do here, something like this. So that's where we start. Uh, and then we have this exponential decay. So again, if I change the X. Okay, that looks a lot better. So we started with quite a high value in terms of the new deaths and it's demonstrated an exponential decay in deaths. We know it's a decay because there's this negative sign right here in 
the equation, okay? If I change this to a positive sign, then zoom out a bit, right? Then you can see we have this growth function again. Change it back to a negative, and I'm into this decay. So that's what we want when people start to get over a disease in an area and start to recover. We want this uh, decrease in the number of people dying from it. Now, similar to how, what I mentioned before, if it was something like cumulative deaths, okay, instead of new deaths per day, we couldn't use a polynomial because a polynomial function uh, could go up and come down and have these local maximums and local minimums. Um, and of course, once you get dead, you, you can't really become undead. Uh, so that the function should only, if it was cumulative, uh, continue to increase. Um, although here we're talking about uh, new deaths. So deaths can decrease and increase uh, if there is another spike in the future or, or another outbreak. Okay, so I think that about wraps it up for a quick intro to using Excel, downloading some data, and being able to fit a function to the data uh, and do some exponential modeling.